In this video, I'm going to show you a bit of hands-on practice uh, on exploratory data analysis using the libraries that we discussed. And for this, I'm going to use the data set from Kaggle called Bank Marketing, Marketing Data Set. And the question that uh, was proposed here was how to find the best strategies to improve for the next marketing campaign and how can financial institutions have a greater effectiveness for future marketing campaigns. So uh, I'm not going to answer these questions. I'm going to just play with the data a bit for you and see how we could visualize the data. I'm going to put the link to this uh, Gaggle database also to the code that we are going to use today and to the data set itself through a GitHub account. Uh, I suggest that if you have time, you go through the questions provided here on the data set and you see if you could find some answers for that. It's a good optional homework. This is not part of the course, but if you want to try your hands on something, probably this is a good uh, way to go. So let's get to our Jupyter notebook. And let's import some useful libraries. These are more or less the libraries that we discussed uh, in today's lecture, Pandas, Seaborn, and Matplotlib. OK, and now let's have a look at our data. So as you see, in this data, there is the age of the people in the campaign, their job, their marital status, their education. I don't know what is default, the balance, if they have a house or not, if they have a loan or not, their contact, which is unknown, majority apparently, and when in the months uh, this is uh, recorded, and all other values. What I'm going to do first, I'm, doing, I'm going to do a bit of cleaning up there. Uh, for example, I don't see anything useful in the contact column and P outcome column. Both of them are quite unknown. And if you look at the data, it's quite unknown until to the end. So what I decide to do, I'm going to drop these two columns. I'm using uh, data.drop function. And let's see how my data looks like now. Well, now as you see, I don't have these two columns anymore. You could decide if you would like to drop more column, columns uh, or if, I don't know what you can do with these two columns basically, but if you want to keep them for whatever reason. What I'm going to do next is to check for the missing values. We discussed today that one of the important steps in EDA, EDA or exploratory data analysis, is to look for the missing values because they will make a lot of problems when we are analyzing our data. So if possible, we want to identify them and we want to deal with them one way or the other. Either we want to replace them with some values or we want to remove those entries altogether. So let's see if we have any missing values. So in some columns, we don't have any missing values, but for example, apparently, uh, someone's job is not clear, someone's education, I don't have information on housing, and for duration I don't have two entries. So let's first drop, <coughs> this, is, this is how I'm going to decide to go here. I don't know the values, I necessarily don't have any way to solving the problem by replacing it with a correct value that I know of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Draw, uh, drop basically those rows. So if there is a missing value in the job column, I'm going to drop that row. Yeah. And let's see now. Yeah, the job. I don't have any missing value on the job anymore, but I have some other places. So this is what I'm going to do with all the entries uh, or the columns with mass missing values, I'm going to drop the respective row, this re respective entries. R keep in mind, I don't, I'm not dropping the columns. The columns are still there. I'm only removing the rows that there is a missing value in them. And now if I have a look, you see there is no missing value anymore. So let's do a bit of uh, data visualization. What I want to do to know is basically 
uh, knowing the percentage of each job status and then plot that. What I do here is first I calculate the percent of percentage of each job status and then I plot the bar graph of percentage job categories. And if in uh, as you see at least in this data set, mostly people are in the management categories and then blue colors, then technicians, and I have a few unknowns that I don't like, but they are still there anyway. So these are in a higher echelon of the working society somehow. So how does their ed education category looks like? I'm going to do something similar for the education to the previous one. I'll calculate the percentage of each education category, but instead of using a bar chart, I'm going to use a pie chart just to have a bit of flavor and see different visualization approaches. Okay, so as you see, mostly they have secondary education, some have primary, tertiary, and unknown. So this is representative for the education level. And it, it, if you remember this thought process chart, whatever that was called, that you would choose your way of visualization. I am looking at a categorical data. There is no time value involved. And there are not even that many categories. So pie chart could be a good representation. So of course, then I could have probably modify that to show the percentage on the chart as well, but I don't have it here. So let's look at the balance. You see, until here we had a visualization, but we could also get meaningful information by looking at the statistical values. So now I see, for example, the average balance is around 1528 and the standard deviation is 3,225 and then I can see where is the mean, the different quartiles, where is the maximum, you see there's quite a bit of difference between mean and maximums probably that is explaining the standard deviation being pretty high. Uh, if you remember I said when we have two different variables and uh, we want to plot them against each other, this is balance, not salary, then uh, a scatter plot is a good way to go. So let's look at my scatter plot. So I have a scatter plot here without any sort of label, but here I also have uh, categories involved as well. So this secondary, it's for education and balance. These are only uh, continuous values, so the scatter plot some, looks something like that. But here I have uh, a numerical continuous value, but at the same time I have some categories, so it's another way of plotting them. A scatter plot looks like this here. Uh, what, what about drawing a pair plots? What if I'm interested in more than two variables? What if I want to do a multivariate analysis? So probably using a pair plot is a good way of going for. I'm using education, balance, and age, and I want to see how they look in a visualized graph. And for this, I'm going to use Seaborn because it's a more complicated, complicated way of showing my data. So as you see, I'm using the data and the variables that I'm interested in is education, balance, and age, and then I want to have their pair plot. So as you can see, you can see different sort of data visualization for all of them, education, age, balance, age, so different ways of showing it. And this is very useful if you're in looking in more than a couple of variables, you have multiple, you can use something like that. Uh, if you remember, in the previous video, I talked about correlation and it's important to know the correlation between uh, different values. Uh, and remember, it's only between numerical values now that we're discussing. It's not about categorical values, it's about continu continuous values. So what I'm interested here, I want to 
have a correlation matrix that is uh, looking into the correlation between age, duration, and balance. So you see, I get a correlation matrix. Obviously, what I see on the diagonal is one because everything is correlated with itself very strongly. It's one. And then you could see that, uh, for example, between balance and duration, you could see between age and duration, or duration and balance. So you can see all these correlation values here. You could also plot them using a heat map. Basically, the, the stronger the color correlation is, the color of your heat map is going to be darker. Let's see how does that look in a heat map. Yeah. So it's it's kind of easier to, to immediate. This is the, this is the good thing to about visualization. Of course, numbers are very good when you want to be exact, but when you want to something hit you directly, see it immediately, probably visualization with the colors. I mean, you see, basically, this is one of the strongest, forgetting about this diagonal, uh, between balance and age. So you could see the, uh, the correlation like this. But what if you want to basically uh, group your uh, values based on some categorical thing. For example, what if I want to group the balance uh, based with regard to the educational level? What I do is basically I say group by education balance and then I want to see their average. So the average of education, uh, the balance for primary is 1522, secondary 1296 and so on. Uh, what if I want to, for example, plot uh, the bar graph of marital state at regard the balance average. I mean, these values really doesn't mean much probably at this point. It's just for showing you how things work. And you could see, apparently, the married people have a higher balance for some reason. Uh, and then single ones, but I mean, the, the difference is not much, especially between the single group and divorced group. Also, we could have three different values in mind, education, marital status, and balance. And then I can have another meet, heat map showing how they are related. So it is for three different angles, not only one. So you see there are va uh, various ways of representing or visualizing your data, uh, keeping in mind whether it is one single variable we're discussing, it is a couple of them, or it's multiple. You could use different uh, sort of value, uh, methods to represent or visualize your data. Uh, this was for today. I are playing with Python. I'm going to upload this code in the GitHub folder and then I'm going to put the link in the description box if you want to access the code and the data. Good luck coding and see you in the final video where I'm going to explain the first mini project.